Yesterday, we launched uh, the Walking Dead universe, the role-playing game on Kickstarter. Uh, today, we have uh, brand uh, manager and producer and uh, Joe Lafavi with us, and we also have uh, the uh, the project uh, lead for for this, Matthias Johnson Hawk. On and we're going to talk talk about this Kickstarter campaign, the product line, take uh, some community questions, answer any questions that you might have uh, about this Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that if you are interested in anything that we're talking about, go check out the Kickstarter right now. It's a great project that we're working with uh, AMC Networks with, uh, where you can role play in the Walking Dead universe and all their shows. And it's just as a fan, I'm super excited about this. So anyway, uh, let's bring on the folks that you're actually here to see, and that of course is Matthias and Joe. Gentlemen, thank you so much for giving us time today to talk about this Kickstarter. A pleasure. I, I, guys, the, right out of the gate, like the response has been crazy. Congratulations! I, like woohoo! Thank you. Yeah, yeah. As a as a fan myself, I I know I shouldn't be surprised because. I mean, the Walking Dead universe is such a cool place to spend your time. I'm, I know because I've played this game, play tested it yeah. a lot of times. Uh, but it's it's still, you know, you you never really want to assume that things are going to go mm-hmm. this sure. great. Uh, so yeah, we're super happy here in Stockholm at the HQ. <laughs> yeah, I you I just you get so in it. That you're just yeah. like this is good this is so much fun but i'm way too close to this <laughs> so, right like, right the, the fact that like people respond and they're like oh i get it or oh i could do this or i could do that. like i know right and like they're starting to react the way we were reacting like years ago <laughs> been like yeah. oh good uh they're like people actually understand like what you could do in this world and why it's so fun and like that's been like stupid rewarding like as soon as you see that epiphy moment I'm like a user, and they're just like, hey, this is what that game is. Be like, yeah, you're going to have fun. <laughs> It'll awesome. it be traumatizing, but you'll have lots of fun. <laughs> hey, you know, that's that's the Walking Dead universe for you at this you'll, point. You will, you will have lots of fun talking about it after the session. Yes, During that's the session. That's you will part. be like, <gasps> yep. Yep. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so let's. I, how long has this been in development with Free League? I, I know, uh, I know. Where, when I found out about it, it was it was a while ago. But uh, I'm just kind of curious as if you want to let uh, anybody know how long this has kind of been be- brewing behind the scenes for for folks that uh, are familiar with with the Free League and, and our titles. Uh, it's been for quite a while, honestly. I'm I'm literally scrolling through to see like when the first date was. It was like 2020 when we first started talking about this. Um, and really, uh, like we knew we wanted to do it pretty much as soon as the opportunity came up. Um, and then it just took a while to really get the engine where we wanted it to be. And the fact that we're so directly collaborating with AMC, you got to fit, you know, into their schedules and make sure that they're giving the kind of input that we need to make the best version of it. So it's taken a while to actually bring to market but we pretty much intentionally did that because we wanted to be a part of like that next chapter you know if we released the game two months after this you know season finale of the walking dead like you know we we might feel a part of the past we wanted to be a part of its future so it it, even though like it's been cooking for quite a while um it still is at that point where like it still feels like we have so much more to do in order to realize really what this thing's capable of. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing, nothing to add there. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So, so this is for the AMC shows that the, if you're not, a, if you haven't seen those AMC shows, they're, they're some of the best television uh, in the last, you know, couple, probably 15 years or so, if not more. Um, some of those episodes are just some of my all time, favorite tv episodes like ever and uh yeah it's it's just it's exciting to be able to to kind of you know take a little portion of that and and kind of mold it and make it make it your own which i think is is as a fan that's that's really exciting to me um yeah let's i think yeah go go, go. no go go, 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 go. well i well i i think that's how it all kind of 
came up really is when we were talking like i i was friends with the the, the gaming team over at amc for a while we were just comic-con buddies who'd walk the floors and stare at toys and you know just have fun and they're really really good at genre you know entertainment as a, a, a whole if you're familiar with some of the other shows that they do too and so we always kind of wanted to play together and you know the walking dead oh this is one of my cats but by the way uh, her name's mooncake and she will probably be um, a co-star <laughs> in a lot of this interview. Hi, Mooncake. Say hi to everybody. Um, she's 11 months old. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so basically, uh, you know, when you watch the show, there's so much about it where, like, as a gaming fan, you're like already looking at the mechanics. You're already like, well, that's the set piece. What did they do right? What did they do wrong? Oh, they left that fence open. Like, there's so much about it where, like, gaming was just an intrinsic part of its DNA. But once we, once the germ was planted of, like, we can make a role-playing game out of this, like, it was, there was no going back. Like, we kind of had to do it. It, it was just common sense. No, it, it was actually waiting to be made. Mm -hmm. And I'm, yeah. I'm super glad that we got to make it. Uh, the lead designer for this uh, is Neil Sinzet, who you may know as the the brain uh, behind the the Basin role playing game and also Tales from the Loop the role playing game. And he also happens to be a super big fan of the Walking Dead TV series. Uh, and it's been yeah, I, we're we're going to talk a little bit about the game today, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what I can tell you all is that as a fan of the series myself, I'm super happy uh, with what he has done in terms of, you know, bringing the feel of the series to the table. And that's yeah. very much what it's about. Yeah. I mean, when 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 I found out that Nils was a super fan that he is, like, I'm obsessed with Tales from the Loop. That's very widely known. It's how Free League and I kind of became friends. I fell in love with it, read it cover to cover like it was freaking Dickens, and ran to Gen Con and forced Thomas to basically be friends with me. <laughs> and so um, everything with Alien and Blade Runner, it all started with Tales from the Loop. And so when they're like, well, you know, Nils, loves this ip been like oh ha, ha, oh this is gonna be rad <laughs> this is <laughs> it was there there i i would i fought with like the wrath of a god to get the rights after that point it's been like mm -hmm. no this this game's happening whether anyone likes it or not like, i love I will, it i will make this <laughs> no. so the so with with Niels, Niels has, has done Tales from the Loop. He's done Basin, which are tend to, they tend to be a little bit on the uh, on the rules light side of of our portfolio of, of games. Um, so was was that a a conscious choice for The Walking Dead is to kind of make it a little more rules light than some of than some of our oh, yeah. more, or more mechanically you know crunchy games? Oh yeah. Uh as I am, I dare say, as we see it, uh, The Walking Dead is, I mean, you have the exploration, you have the survival elements, you have the action elements, but most of all, it's about the story and the drama and the characters. Uh, so for us, it was was clear from the start that this would would not be the game where you shift through a catalog of 15,000 different types of ammo. Uh, it's not that kind of game at all. It, it has the rules it needs to function as a really nice arena for, for character drama. It, and also, of course, in a setting that is highly threatening, uh, highly tense, and it, at most times also very horrifying. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a great number of people who are watching the show who, if you ask them, are you a gamer, they may not say yes immediately. Mm -hmm. But if given a, an accessible space where they can collaboratively tell a story and role play and recreate and explore the kind of stories and themes and events and settings that they've seen on screen, I think a lot of them would find out they love this. 
And I think that's kind of been one of my greatest, you know, naively optimistic hopes is that there could be a whole lot of people out there who are walking into The Walking Dead as an RPG and realizing that tabletop RPGs are where it's at. That this is, you know, a kind of storytelling and a kind of social experience that, you know, maybe game night isn't just about rolling dice and, you know, victory conditions. Maybe it's about the storytelling and about like those memories that you create together and what it says mm -hmm. about you and what it brings out in you. That's why I love RPGs. And so I'm, I'm really, really hoping that the accessibility and the versatility of this engine for The Walking Dead is going to create a lot more gamers who might be looking at some of the other things we did and went, hmm, maybe I should give that a shot too. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, there's two modes of play with this game. There's there's survival mode and there's campaign <laughs> mode, which kind of, if folks are familiar with our, with our alien uh, RPG, there's two modes to that as well. There's cinematic mode and there's campaign mode. Mm -hmm. uh, can either of you talk a little bit about the differences between the two modes and, and what makes them unique and, and, and you know, uh, they are they are very very different sure. from each other uh, in in the same way that that uh, the two modes main modes of the alien RPG are different. Uh, the the campaign mode is what I think about as the uh, the best way for you and your friends to to together create an experience that is similar to to what the characters in the TV series uh, experience. So it 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 has no predetermined story. It, it is basically a sandbox, and that is something that we have mentioned again and again that this is a it's a sandbox game, but it's a sandbox very much in the sense of you know, faction play. Mm -hmm. So the, the players establish their, or player characters establish their haven somewhere on an, a big area map that is full of uh, sectors to explore. The game master has uh, an area map uh, that is hidden from, from the players at the start, where you have different factions. There can be swarms of walkers, big and small. There can be places to loot and scavenge uh, for supplies and mechanical parts or whatever you need to get your haven working in, in a better way. Uh, and where the story go goes is very much up to the players because the factions are much like the, the factions that you meet in the TV series. They are not necessarily hostile, but they are also very skeptical when it comes to inviting strangers. Uh, so who you end up befriending and who you end up on the wrong side of is very much about the decisions made by the players and their characters as the game progresses. And, and yo, I think you can talk a little bit, because I love when you do that, about the fact that in campaign play, it is the the, the, the the group of player players and their characters that set the goals basically for themselves, mm -hmm. and how that can lead to very 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 different types of stories and very different types of gameplay actually. Yeah, I mean, I love what we did with Alien and the cinematic mode and how mm -hmm. you know it feels like you're dropped into your own film and everyone is in it together, and death isn't really the end or a consequence, it's just a part of the experience. And it, it really is just these escalating stakes. And we've taken that and with the survival mode, just evolved it to a whole new level with how they've rebuilt stress and extended it out into the world itself and how it reacts to you in a way that to me is pretty intoxicating to be honest i don't know what that says about me but <laughs> but, <laughs> but um like you you have these collaborative experiences where with the with the the, the campaign mode you're the whole goal is to just persevere 
you know, the whole goal is to just survive long enough to see what comes next and overcome what comes next. And it's about those small moments in between and the human drama that happens as you really redefine what it means to be living and thriving within this new world order. Oh, with the survival mode, there's no next. There's literally just like, you just need to survive. <laughs> and by and not everybody will and it it will be something where if one person loses their cool if one person's relationship gets sprayed if one person blindly you know recklessly runs into a situation or rage overtakes them it will start to impact the group in a way that it really does matter how you manage these relationships and how you manage not just your own stress, but the people who matter the most to you, what your agendas are in a way where it doesn't matter how many people are there. There's one person or one thing that means more to you than anything. And you must protect that even if they're not necessarily making that easy for you. Mm -hmm. And when you put that in, in a very contained high stress situation, Lot of really interesting things happen as far as just what it brings out in the characters and, and the scenario and the thing that is incredibly cool with what they've done with the stress mechanics is there's this threat meter now where before it was stress you know when you make a wrong call when you you know stumble into some bad luck or you push your your your, your luck it impacts you but now when the stress starts to build the walking dead universe kind of feels it and it will become more inhospitable more hostile more dangerous the more you allow the stress to impact you and those around you and so just like in the walking dead there might be someone who is just going rogue and ruining it for everyone or means well but just recklessly you know, rushes in, in, into the fray and escalates and all those moments where realistically you probably shouldn't do that, but man, that guy's just got it coming. <laughs> I'm going to punch Nika in the face and I know that there's zombies everywhere and I know that I shouldn't fire this gun and I know that it's just going to draw Warcas and I don't care. Those moments happen mechanically and thematically in a way that is just magic. And so I just, I'm really, really loving the survival mode because for game nights, for me, like the way that cinematics became that way for me to get people into RPGs and say like, hey, I'm not asking you to commit to living as a space trucker for the next eight years. Just just spend a few hours <laughs> with me on, in the frontier and have, have some fun. I feel like these survival modes are, are fitting that same goal for me. And it, they've just been so much fun. I think people are going to have a blast with them. Uh, it, it should be mentioned as well that the, the survival mode scenarios typically, typically come with pre-generated characters. Yeah. Those characters all have secret, secrets. They all have agendas that somehow tie into the, the problem at hand. Yeah. Um, okay. These survival mode scenarios are typically about a, a specific issue that needs to be solved like right now yep. uh, and you have you have this cost of, of pre-written characters that are geared for drama to arise for yes. conflict to arise because nice. as it turns out it is often <laughs> the case that even if they think they share the same goal maybe in the end they want slightly different things and it can become a little bit uh, and, and, and just to expand a little bit on what Joe was said, uh, sure, there are these uh, characters, individual characters that intentionally or by, uh, yeah, are unlucky thinking and just make stupid things that they know, know are, are, are dumb to do in a certain situation. But I mean, in, in this game, it can also be basically that you stumble and fall over uh, over an empty barrel or something yep. and that little mistake that you yep. didn't even you know intentionally you didn't want to make a loud noise at this moment yep and that can be basically the end of the entire uh, group or mm -hmm. at, at least it can it can mean that someone gets really really hurt 
and sure. everyone would point at you and say, you know, what, look where you're going <laughs> next time, or you'll be the one yeah. in that arrow, yeah. and we're sending yeah. you down the downstream. Yeah, yeah. So, re re remember that scene in Lord of the Rings where Mary just knocks a bucket into yes. the well? Yes. Welcome that. to the Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's oh, just right. a I love guys, it. like, but yeah. is it? <laughs> I love it. Fool of a took. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, let's. I let's... want that in my tombstone. <laughs> 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 let's, get <laughs> let's get to a few of the questions in the chat, and then I've got a few more questions oh, yes. that uh, I would like to uh, address as well. But. Uh, Trudobi asks, hi, I hope we learn more about the threat meter, push, stress, dice mechanics of the game. No, you can read more about this in the beta PDF soon is not a proper answer. They're already calling us out. I love it. No, love it. Uh, sure. I can give you the quick rundown. Stress sure. is something that you gain uh, from stressful situations, easily put. You gain it first and foremost mechanically when you push your dice rolls, meaning that you you want to re-roll your dice because you failed on a test. Uh, when you push, you always get to add uh, a level of stress to your PC. So next time you roll, or actually immediately when you re-roll that skill test, you have this stress die uh, that you need to add to your roll. And if you roll a one on that, it's, it is called mechanically rolling a walker. Uh, you mess up and something bad will happen. Uh, as Joe said, this often means that the world around you reacts by getting even more threatening. But it can also, depending on the GM and what fits the story, it can mean that you, you notice that you, run, you just run out of ammo, or if you're in a vehicle that you get a flat tire, or as I said before, you make a loud noise that attracts walkers, and it can mean a lot of different things that, you know, the world answers to your, to you mis messing up. You can also gain stress from other things besides pushing a roll. Uh, if you see someone get bitten, for instance, uh, if, uh, if you're in a situation where there are walk walkers about and the threat level rises to three on a six, uh, scale of six, uh, it means the, the walkers notice you and start moving in. That also gives you stress. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, did I miss anything important there, Yo? I don't, I don't think so. I, I, I think that what, what you're basically touching on is like there's this, it can trigger a self-perpetuating cycle, if you're familiar with how stress yeah. works in Alien, in, in a way that is really dangerous. Like that cycle... I fell into it a number of times, and no matter what I did, I was Hudsoning by the end. <laughs> but, but like here, you could ruin it for everybody. It's not just you, mm. you know, quote saying game over. Yeah. It's game over for the whole group. And, you know, and on it really any does road. change the stakes. Yeah, and on any road, which yeah. also makes it sort of a tactical game, deciding. Uh, do I do I dare do this move yep. right now that requires a skill roll because I have three stress dice in my hand and mm -hmm. if I roll a walker the things will escalate even more. Sure. Yep. So um, yeah, yeah. They, the, it, the the whole question of do I dare, um, do I, dare? I think I is that. so great and so ever present in this game mm -hmm. and what it's kind of forced out is the same way that like I fell in love with what we did with downtime in Blade Runner, how it kind of forces you to breathe. It forces you where you can't just grind mm -hmm. and go to the next point, go to the next point. Dude, you're going to burn out. Like get a drink at a bar, like go do something that's going to give you time to reassess and to rethink about what's going on, have a dream with unicorns in it and something will just click in a place where if you don't allow your PCs to react as humans would to these very horrific events, things will go poorly. 
Sure. And so it kind of forces you to have those little moments in between of like, maybe we should camp for the night. Maybe yeah, but, somebody and, and should I mean, go on watch and have a story. This person's losing yeah. their cool. Let's talk to them and sit them okay. down and calm them down. Because if not, we're all going to die. <laughs> and so it just, it forces those story moments mechanically in a way where it just feels so authentic to the Walking Dead experience that is just always surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, to relieve stress, to decrease your level of stress, you you actually need to have social interactions. And yep. if you have them with uh, that very special person that is sort of the, the, the sun and moon for you, called the your anchor, you have two anchors as a PC in campaign mode, and it's one of your fellow PCs, and then the, it's an NPC that lives in your haven. And if you spend time with with the, that one of those persons, it will uh, relieve stress, stress even more effectively than if you just have a short social interaction, have that drink, or have that 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 kiss behind the barn, or whatever it can be out when you're out out and about. Mm -hmm. so does anything happen like if your anchor gets you know yeah. you know knocked out is, is, is there like a is, does does that have uh, does your stress level go shoot i would i would assume that uh, you know we, we've all seen the shows where you know mm -hmm. where, where carl uh, you know and, mm -hmm. and and some of those other you know mo momentous you yeah. know characters that uh, yeah. are just remember what happened to morgan Oh, absolutely. You show them how she absolutely. was. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like things can the, those people lose it. You know, yeah, the, yeah the, absolutely. Seeing people suffer horrific fates will lead to getting stress. And there is also a system that you can actually become the game term for it is shattered. Yeah. So it's, it's like mentally totally broken down. And, um, if you have had certain experiences during a game session, you have to, at the end of that session, make a role to try to handle your fear. Uh, and it can, for instance, be, you know, people dying around you or, or seeing someone being attacked by walkers and so on. Uh, if you fail that role, you become shattered uh, and which sort of means that you suffer from some form of pretty severe psychological ailment that you need to have treated uh, together with your anchor and together with your friends to, to come back to a situation where you actually can function normally. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is definitely something that threatens you in, in the game as well as we have seen so many times in the series. Yeah. I've seen it's also help with player safety too, to be honest. Like there's yeah. some pretty dark uh, yeah. events and themes sure. that can mm -hmm. happen in this show. And mechanically, every player is encouraged to be aware of how every other player is feeling okay. because it impacts the group mechanically. And so there's always going to be someone to then like, do we dare? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. What do you need? How do we help? And it just, you see these found families happening within the show. And it just, it sometimes happens so fast. And it, it in, in a way, really has kind of inspired those same kind of like almost lightning fast, like we're in this together mm -hmm. moments that um, have felt really true to me. So one thing that I, I mentioned to Matthias before we went live is, is how much I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead and how much it has, you know, kind of a personal you know, uh, feeling for me because, you know, back in 2010, you know, my daughter was, was four years old at that point. <laughs> and, you know, we weren't going out on the weekends and having fun and connecting with, with our friends. We would invite our friends over on Sunday nights and watch the walking dead. And that happened for many, many years, even after that. And so we all kind of experienced that show together. Yeah. And so like, I can't wait to relive that all over again and mm -hmm. and do that you know in a whole other fashion like that that, that yeah. for me is what really has me super stoked about this this product line yeah the the thing that excites me about this that i've never been able to do in in my other games too is like your faction and your micro society and your stronghold could actually exist in the same world as mine 
And so there are two gaming groups that could literally decide we're going to have a crossover mm. and I'm going to I'm going to visit your stronghold and you're going to visit mine or maybe my character's going to go over here cuz I'm Aaron and I'm scouting for new members and I'm trying to see what happens. Like your scope of your world in The Walking Dead is so small right. that every day mm. you could turn one turn you can take one step further and there's the commonwealth and you're like what <laughs> there's society what is happening but like that's that's the truth that's how this world works and so i'm super excited about actually even whole gaming groups deciding like you want to make this real you want to have a crossover do you want to have like you know those old school land parties we used to have like i want yep. a land party for the walking dead i want like 40 <laughs> people like fighting off a horde that is which just would be impossible unless you find one more gaming group mm -hmm. and someone's like oh thank god they have a doctor <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> i think that would be so awesome to have that kind of experience and i just i've never been able to pull that off in any other rpg really in the way that like this is where i want the walking dead to go absolutely um, let's get to a mixed question here. It says, uh, in future supplements, will options be in place for playing in other cities like London rather than Atlanta, or will it be more like MZ? You can use where it's down to the GM to build the game around at local sites. I mean, I guess that's one thing that that uh, uh, that Tales from the Loop does really well is that you can kind of you know modify it and, and put the setting into your own hometown. Yeah, um, but, is that I mean, something that we're we're looking at doing for uh, for The Walking Dead? <laughs> This is this is definitely one of the, the interesting things to me that I when I start a campaign I can I can go to my old school atlas, flip up the page where my region is portrayed, yeah. and then turn that into an area map uh, for the game. And and I am basically ready to sit down with my my friends create the characters, create the uh, factions and, and whatnot, uh, have a session zero and start playing a campaign. So there is there is absolutely nothing that stops anyone from placing the the their game mm -hmm. in a place else in the world and also to choose when in the, the timeline of the Walking Dead universe that you wanna, you know, start playing. Yep. So yeah, yeah. And, and you don't really need that much resources in terms of, you know, you don't need to buy a lot of stuff from us to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, or what do you say? Is that, was I stupid now, Joe? I just <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think we're all in it for, for, for the long haul. No, <laughs> yeah, the, the most I think my favorite test of this game, and clearly I've been playing this a lot, um, was I invited a few friends over and we were talking and we made dinner. Um, we were just having fun at the table. And then I told them, you've actually been playing for about an hour and a half. Um, you hear something strange. <laughs> and like literally the game map is my apartment. And you look around and I'm like, everything within reach is pretty much all you got. Uh, what's next? What do you do? And that actually worked. <laughs> and it was so fun to just see people be like, wait, 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 what? And someone's like, uh, I grabbed that standing lamp. <laughs> it's just like, it was, it was, uh, it was really entertaining to have people realize that like, this is in my world. Um, like I can put this in my backyard quite literally. Uh, and have it resonate and feel personal in a way that, again, is kind of hard to pull off in a, 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 other ways. Like it, it is, it's funny how many things I could use as a blunt striking weapon in my house. It again made me ask myself some questions about myself. <laughs> but uh, luckily, I, I'm 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 a geek, so there were lots of prop replicas and things that uh, you know proved helpful in a post-apocalyptic yeah. scenario. Suddenly, <clears throat> my my collections. My my girlfriend was like, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe uh, it's good thing, you bought that samurai sword. <laughs> one thing we should uh, say is that the 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 survival scenarios that we uh, hopefully and that we intend to to present to the the world uh, in the years to come, 
they will most often uh, play out in uh, or be related to mm -hmm. locations and people that you know from the show. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, me meaning of course that they will most often be, be set in uh, in America. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think a handy uh, GM has to put that many yeah. minutes, honestly, into converting it into uh, an area that they prefer. Uh, may, is it maybe the, the S Swedish countryside or the you know Central Europe somewhere, or why not Sherwood Forest? Or yeah, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so so that's. The, the official material will officially be set in America often, mm -hmm. uh, if not all the time. The, uh, are there any plans to, and maybe this is a question for Joe, is are there any plans to cover any aspects of the Walking Dead universe that haven't been addressed in the, in, in the shows yet? Is there is there anything that, that, that maybe, because we've, we've seen that with, with a lot of, and we've seen RPG books in the past become source material for, for ex, you know, existing IPs. And kind of fill in the blanks here and there uh, is is do you know if that's the plans with the AMC at all? That's I mean look, if I could write my own Frank Capra happy ending, of course that's sure. what I would love. Um, I I would love nothing more than to create some canon that has my likeness, <laughs> <laughs> canon in some <laughs> triumph of the walking dead in 2032 coming to screens nationwide um who knows i i what i think is really fun about all this is like we definitely are in that next chapter i mean if you've watched right. tales from the walking dead the anthology like they're already exploring what's happening in other worlds they're already they exploring what's happening with different perspectives with the Daryl spinoff, like we're flying overseas, like things mm -hmm. are really happening in this world. You know, it wouldn't be the first time that a gamer is sitting at a table pushing their limits, pressing their luck, and mm -hmm. comes up with something that someone else is like, that's a that's a really good idea. <laughs> that is like, you know, there's a reason why so many of the fandoms that have endured and grown throughout the years had a tabletop RPG behind sure. it. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I think it fosters creativity and innovation through limitation and restrictions that rules give in a way that is kind of, you know, the, the best health potion an IP can can drink. So I, 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 I would very much hope that we provide some inspiration we'll we'll see what happens um yeah, yeah I, I can't give promises but i'll be doing everything in my power to make that happen uh, a more direct answer uh, even if it's not exactly what you meant you uh, doug is that we will over the coming years see not on tv but at gaming tables yeah. all over the world fantastical new stories play out yeah, in the Walking Dead universe. Yeah. Uh, more or less on a daily basis, uh, yeah. thanks to this this role-playing game. Uh, and that is, that is, yeah, that is something. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to, uh, I, so many questions. Let's, uh, Patty's got a good question. It says, I'm happy to see the year zero engine pool system in a new game. What decides if a new game uses a pool or a step-up version of Year Zero? Of course, you know, there's kind of two versions of our Year Zero engine that are out yeah. on the market. Uh, we've got the D6 dice pool system, and then we've got stepped-up dice like in Twilight 2000 and, and Blade Runner. Uh, I guess, I don't know, Matthias, maybe this question is for you. Which, which you know, how do you determine which system of the, or which version of the Year Zero engine goes with, with which product line? Well, building building a system is building a machine with very many integrated parts, uh, and I guess the easy answer would be that we use the dice mechanic that works best with the other parts we want to include in in the, the game. So in this case, uh, the dice pool system works really really well with the kind of stress mechanic that we wanted to use. 
uh, with the threat meter and the threat level, you can, you you're going to see when when the game when the beta comes, <laughs> you will you will see that, that there is a lot of all good things are six in this game. Mm -hmm. So the threat uh, threat level goes up to six, and the the haven's capacity and defense goes up to six, and so on. So and and I also. Uh, think that one of the reasons it turned out this way in this particular game is that the game was uh, uh, designed by Nils Hinze, who, uh, who has done these dice pool systems before, uh, quite successfully, I might <laughs> add, so, yeah. Very, very true. Uh, Richie Rob asks, I can't wait to see the Foundry VTT module, which just got unlocked uh, as a stretch goal, which is awesome to see. Uh, will it be available when the physical copies of the book are? Uh, that is I love the, your cat, Rob. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's the ambition, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it should be. Okay. But, but, but I mean... It, the, uh, in these this day and age, when when production, you know, you know, it's it's almost more likely that the VTT will be in your hands, so to speak, before because of you know printing, shipping, logistics, and and yeah. whatnot. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, I think I dare say that definitely not at the time that you get the PDFs because yeah, you will right. have long before you get the physical yeah. books. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny question. how when we used to talk about this a few years ago, I, I would make a joke like, well, barring, you know, world pandemics, you know, mm. we'll hit the time. And now I'm just like, yeah, I don't yeah. know, guys. <laughs> it'll be there when it'll be there <laughs> if a zombie apocalypse comes out. Okay. At this point, anything's a roll of the dice. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you have? I know in the in the chat I've seen I've scrolled down and seen a couple of questions already, but I know a couple of people have asked uh, kind of the approximate ETA on on the beta PDF uh, once the Kickstarter ends. Do you do you have any kind of? Yes, you know, Nor normally we we wait three weeks after the Kickstarter ends because that's the time it takes for for Kickstarter to help uh, raise the funds that was actually pledged. And before that has happened, we don't know how many who will drop their pledge or, or that there will be problems with the payment or whatnot. So normally we wait three weeks. And my absolute aim is that we will have uh, have beta PDFs not very long after that. Uh, but as you said, as this is a, a collaboration, it's not only Free League and Yo that is in on this. We have we have partners in in uh, in the. I must say, amazing AMC team that has been very helpful so far, but they also need time to, you know, look at the stuff we are, we are going to release and so on. So, but I hope that is enough of an answer. The, the definite ambition is that it will not take more than a month after the end of the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I also want to, um, my, I, I feel compelled to say that like the AMC team has been pretty amazing <laughs> throughout this whole process it, it is something where you know it's not just like a an email waiting in an inbox to be read mm -hmm. for two weeks it's like a whole team doing like what about this what about that fact check this mm -hmm. canon oh i love that mechanic but what about this like every page like from multiple people and they're people who are high on a totem pole that should probably be making a show, but they're they're literally reading our our stuff and getting that. excited about it, and it's really <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> that they really care about and... making this game awesome in a way that's that so just cool. like ah, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that that's awesome, and, and, and it shows that the, that there's a passion and, and that that they yeah. care about the you know what what's getting put out there, and, and that's awesome yeah. to to see. Uh, Kevin asks, congrats to the team for League on another successful Kickstarter. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. Uh, will the future release roadmap follow something along the lines of what Alien is, uh, alternating between survival box sets and source books? Yeah, at the moment, this is not 100% clear. Um, we, as you hopefully understand, I mean, we didn't know what the response on this game was going to be. Uh, before we launched the Kickstarter, uh, 
Uh, so we 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 definitely have plans when, but nothing is set in stone as of yet. It's now with this yeah. fantastic start, I mean, it, it it hasn't been more than what is it like 24, 27 hours or something like that. Yeah, and it's it's going really well. Uh, we will uh, sit down uh, and and have a closer discussion about that, and we love to hear from you in the comment sections. Uh, on the Kickstarter and so on, uh, what what you would like to see for the game going forward? The main the main idea because the game uh, campaign mode is the idea for the campaign mode isn't that you will, are going to need to buy a lot of stuff from us to be able to tell those stories. So uh, uh, I dare say that the product line here will line uh, uh, or lean more heavily towards the, the cinematics or the survival modes okay. the scenarios. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. yeah, but it would be like incredibly helpful because it's such a versatile engine because so much mm -hmm. can happen and literally every gaming group can do an entirely different experience to hear from our players and the core mm -hmm. fans are going, well, I want this, well, sure. what about that? Well, it would be great if you made this even an accessory of like, I'm, this would really help me to get us back in and keep us in the theory of the mind. Like this is such a versatile engine in a way where, you know, and it's such a huge global audience to, to actually hear what people want, to hear mm -hmm. how we can be making this a, a you know, a game night staple. Like I, I, I think we're, we're not going to find that out until people really crunch into but, that beta. Yeah, start playing. When they start yeah. playing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Meme asks, are we going to be getting a, Rick's Grime, a Rick Grimes as a pre-made pre character? Wow, that is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see as the campaign progresses, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I make a note of it here. So. Mm -hmm. Wink, wink, nudge, see. nudge, say no more, say no more. <laughs> <Say> no more. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Catherine wants to know, will there be a Mooncake champion pet in the, in the game? You just made my life perfect. <laughs> I, I, I was just about to compare uh, Moonshine, uh, Mooncake, uh, to your personal, you know, uh, Walker that you have too. Yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's also Cookie Puss who's uh, a little tabby asleep by by my second mm -hmm. monitor. Uh, so I I have two. I'm I'm like. Michonne and I have yeah. like my, 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 oh, my yes. two little companions. Um, I certainly hope so. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time I've put my cats into a free league game. If anyone's familiar with Blade Runner and Biscuits, the unofficial office cat of the RDU, I'm not saying Biscuits looks like my cat, but I'm not saying that. <laughs> guys, 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 guys. I just. Uh... Uh, had a look at the uh, campaign page, and uh, you were talking about Michonne. Uh, mm -hmm. We are not very far now from seeing her as a pre-gen. Oh, oh nice. nice! I'm actually uh, ready to unlock that uh, stretch goals with the graphics. Maybe, maybe it will happen while we're live. <laughs> Appointment viewing. Uh... Ecorin role playing and worldwing asks rules are asks rules light is all well and good, but I'd like to see some systems about scavenging, attrition, and community building. Oh, you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. You That's will, good. but not super detailed and not very heavy uh, rules about those things, but they are definitely central to the game. So yeah, mm -hmm. well, we have a, a one big chapter about going on runs. Uh, which is basically what you're asking for when it comes to scavenging. We have a D666 scavenging uh, list uh, or table that you can use to roll up to, uh, items that you find. Uh, attrition, where uh, there are rules for, I mean, if you don't find enough uh, food and, and stuff or clean water, uh, that will severely impact not only you, but your whole community, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your haven and its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. And community building, yeah, there will be a, a fairly light but a base building system uh, where the, the your haven basically has two 
different uh, stats. Uh, mm -hmm. One is called capacity and the other one defense. And they, as I said, they, they range from one to six. And to raise this level, you as a community will, will perform uh, projects that it require both time and manpower and certain uh, skills to be performed. And uh, when you succeed, you can raise the, the capacity, meaning that you can harbor even more people Mm -hmm. uh, when you raise the defense, you will be able to withstand swarms of walkers a little bit longer for each time yeah, until the horde comes. And then, yeah, you will probably have to find some shelter True. some yeah. other way. Yeah. And the interesting thing is also that these capacity and defense, both, both of them can drop. Uh, okay. Basically everything in the game, and this is one of the, the, the things that I'm, I think is so elegant, we haven't touched upon it already, which is strange, but Nils has designed the game with uh, the engine of the story uh, is basically something that's called issues. And everything has issues in this game. It, uh, the, ha the haven, your gear, people in the game, uh, it can be uh, vehicles or Basically, every, everything can have issues. And issues is it not, not necessarily a flaw, but it's something that the GM can turn into a challenge for you as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are also, the GM has the, the option to introduce secret uh, issues that can be used, for instance, when it comes to your haven. So you think you are safe and sound and you sleep well, not good in, in the world of the dead that you probably never do, but you feel safe until the, the game master uh, decides it's time to up the stakes and activates a challenge related to the, the Haven's issue. And it can show that there is a crack in the wall, uh, that there are uh, cracks in the, the ground that makes it possible for walkers to, to slither through, I don't know, the sewer system or whatnot and come up in the middle of your haven um, and so on. Okay. So, yeah, I think we covered all the, the things that were mentioned in the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. The, the, not, the, the, super, the other... not super detailed, not crunchy, but enough to make uh, interesting stories. Yeah. Uh, the thing about resources, too, which I, I found super fun, is that um, it makes, how do I put this? It makes empathy a burden, if I if I can put it okay, that way. Okay, sure. Um, where if someone shows up at your gates and they're nice and they have kids and you want to help them, you have to look at your food stores and go, well, damn it. <laughs> you know, like there's even Alexandria, this like perfect suburb and solar power. I've been like, well, you're eating dog food in about two days if you let those three other mouths in. So what are you going to do? I guess you're going to have to put, you're going to have to do a scavenging run. That sounded like a good idea in the time, but the best scavenger is your wife. And she's now going to put her life in danger because you welcome these people in. Do I really want to do that? I learned from that the last time. Maybe I shouldn't open that door. There's the drama that arises from something simple as finite resources that, again, I, 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 it's magic to me in a way of how these rules end up working so perfectly when it comes to the thematics. But I've seen it come to life in a way where, like, once you experience that once during gameplay, you're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> like, you start asking yourself, I'm just like, I know I'm a good person, but maybe I should pretend I didn't hear that knock. <laughs> because yeah, I because like my family. <laughs> your, your wife is also your anchor. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Uh, yeah, um, it gets hard. Like yeah, basic yeah. decisions you think would be easy your, to make are not your, your easy to daughter. make in this game. So yeah, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, very, very well put there, uh, Yo. Absolutely. Uh, Mohammed asks, will there be an equivalent of secret agenda mechanics in this game? Well, yeah. As I mentioned, we will have these pre-made characters in the survival scenarios. I guess, I don't know, Yo, as a, one of the... You have, you have looked at this closely when it comes to the alien 
uh, cinematics, yes. but that's yeah, pretty I, much I, the equivalent, the equivalent. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, if if you're familiar with how it worked in Alien, then it's it's very very similar here. Um, it's just how you use those mechanics to apply to the right thematics, really. Um, of like when you pull those cards and if you pull those cards, and uh, there's there probably is going. This might be a, a deep hole, but you know, like a Dante um, of the Walking Dead universe uh among us sometimes i mean particularly if you're doing crossovers uh between gaming groups and factions there's there's a lot that can be done with this if that's the direction you want to go mm, sure let's see question yeah. is there a quick and dirty way of making a new character community mes members as a player due to the lethality of the universe is it yeah. uh, is, is character question. creation I mean, fairly easy? Yeah, when it comes to a community member, NPC survivors, as they are called in the game, uh, there are lists of pre-made uh, NPC survivors that you can pick and choose from. Uh, if you, as a PC, happen to, you know, bite the dust uh, during a session, uh, there is often the option to convert, quickly convert one of the, the NPCs that you have brought along on your scavenging run uh, into a player character. Uh, there is, you know, the situation, I, I, I talked to Dave over at, uh, over at the Effect podcast uh, earlier today, and, you know, when, when creating a totally new PC, has its challenges in this game because you have an established group that is that yeah even if they don't all like each other or even get along very well they tend to be forced to trust each other to some extent okay. if one of those people die and you create a totally new pc that comes as 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 you described comes to the gate of alexandria and says Please take me in. I am so hungry. I mean, why should it trust you? So th yeah. there's a challenge in that. Most of the time, you will end up converting one of the NPCs uh, that you still have created together with your, you know, player friends. So, but yeah. converting one of the the piece that the already integrated in that community mm -hmm. and convert convert yeah. them to a PC. Like I, we we had this this ongoing hashtag in our game of remember Terminus, where like that was one of the <laughs> hugest twists for me. Sure. That like wow, I like this show. Of like yeah. you kept on seeing these signs all around in the early episodes. You're like, there's hope. There's mm. just there's hope. Mm. Just make it to Terminus, and then you make it Terminus. You're like, no, oh, yeah. we made it to Terminus. <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> and so it's like, just remember Terminus, guys. Every time you, <laughs> you meet somebody new or you see a sign of hope, hashtag remember Terminus. <laughs> it is just <laughs> that sweet smell of barbecue may not be what you think. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, someone actually asked about a, 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 cook, a cookbook uh, stretch goal for this. And, I'm, and, and, and people, I think Bill in the comments was like, I think we might want to stay away from that yeah. stretch goal for this project. Wait, was his name actually Bill? Did, yeah. Did you, what, what, oh, there's a deep pull joke in that for like the five fans who got that. <laughs> Bill really doesn't like Terminus. Yeah, Bill, Bill, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, oh that's the best. That's too funny. Uh, there was a question about the uh, the survival modules that were mm -hmm. that we want to uh, put out. Are are they going to be? I know with like our our, our uh, previous with Alien, the, the they kind of had an overarching. You know, it was like a trilogy almost, with, or a trilogy with with those oh, okay. uh, first three. Is uh, is, is that going to be the plan with with these uh, these survival mode uh, supplements? Do you think? Do you think we'll, we'll try to link them somehow? I think I think that in the cases when we and if we uh, release a number of them simultaneously, okay. the the plots will be thematically linked so that they will be possible to play as something of a you know chronicle or uh, yeah play them in sequence. But 
<laughs> with this game, you will not be able to assume that anyone survives the first sure. scenario. So there will be sort of no. You can't. You can't assume that you will have a, a serious an adventuring party that sort of tackles all three scenarios. But if someone should survive, I mean, it will be possible to to make them into a continuous story. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I almost hope that some of them even just serve as a toolkit for people on oh, their home brood and home games. Of like, wow, that's a really cool set piece. Or I love that pre-generated character. Let let me yeah. you know have them be a cameo. Like I I'm I'm hoping that you know people can take these things and you know make them their their, their own in many ways. Mm. Uh, Killhard Kill uh, says, uh, is any else, anybody else buying the Art of Walking Dead universe book because it's in the pile of books with Joe? Uh, it is, it is gorgeous. I, I do, I do love that book. It was, um, one of the epiphany moments of like, when we really started to get into it of like, well, how structured is the world? What assets do you have? Like, how much have you really thought about it? And they're like, here's six pages of just improvised weapons. And like, I love you. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is going to be just fine. So it is actually a really great book to just flip through and see like just how they piece apart the, the world. It's been a big resource for me to kind of get my head into it. Uh, and I'm, that's not a paid endorsement. I, <laughs> I just really like the book. <laughs> Jason and Chris uh, Handy Cross asks, "How involved is AMC in the game's design? What what role do they play? Um, how 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 involved have they been, Joe? And and uh, well, I've got another question to kind of follow up that as as well. If if, if you we'll, we'll get to that after after this question. And do you, do you, do you want to take that first, my Yeah, I think you should take that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you, I, you are you are the middleman. Man. Yes, I am your paladin with tower shield. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> thankfully, I haven't needed uh, the tower shield in 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 this particular case, where uh, they've been pretty involved. I mean, we play tested it for quite a while uh, because we really wanted to make sure that this thing was good when we exposed it to them, and we kind of sorted out how crunchy it needed to be and how complex it needed to be. Um, you can get lost in the details a lot. We, we so we we definitely were kind of like tinkering in our bat cave for a while um, before it got there. Uh, but once it got there, they have been like I could probably I don't think they'd like it if I'd screen share. But if I did, you'd see every page, and there'd be like comments on thirty things of like think about this or what about that. I love that mechanic. Can you explain this a little bit more? That wouldn't work. Well, actually, we did in this episode this. So what about that? And so they honestly have had a very direct collaboration and inspiration on the final product to the point where they they have made it a better game. Um, and that is um, a pretty awesome thing to be able to say. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it hasn't been anything but, but you know, helpful. Because yeah. in, in a f very few cases, they... Uh, we have been told a hard no, okay. uh, and a reason why, mm -hmm. and it's been totally understandable. And it's like, yeah, you're right. Yep, mm -hmm. I get what you mean. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. we'll try to rework this, but it's very very few details that has come to that situation. In most cases, they come with very great suge suggestions that, uh, as an editor. Uh, it's it's mostly me and my my colleague Thomas Harrison who does the editing for the rules and the setting uh, and yeah gameplay and whatnot and uh, yeah it, often it's it's like you 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 read the comments and edits with a smile because you feel yep. that man this is going to make this product better yeah yeah like they actually care um, yeah, they, and it is talk about they are gamers obviously yep yep obviously. yeah. Yeah, when they do like and a deep pull of like, well, I played this game back this, and then like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah good, 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 good point. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been a charmed relationship so far. Mm. 
Excellent, excellent. Um, besides having players create their own stories in the Walking Dead universe, uh, is there anything that else that AMC Networks is looking to have this product line do for fans that uh, of the Walking Dead universe that aren't that, that, that they aren't currently experiencing? Is, is there any other you know I, I do? I know that they want to put the books out. You know, they want to have freely put the books out. Is is there anything that they else anything else that they have plans for for this? Uh, the I, well, there's the life play. I mean, we, ah, we, we okay. could we, we we could talk about that a bit. Sure, but, you want to um, talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, that's honestly where a lot of this started. Um, I'm obsessed with Critical Role and Stream of Blood and a lot of the actual plays that are, are out there. Um, and um, I, I just think it's one of the most fascinating, entertaining types of content to put on a screen. And so um, it was really like of our conversations around like, man, that's so cool. Why isn't this just like on AMC? Like, why, 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 why aren't more people doing this? And then it was like, well, we could do this. <laughs> Do you want to just do that? Um, and that's that was honestly the genesis of everything. Um, and so from the very beginning, uh, oh yay! Uh, someone in the comments like Stream of Blood is awesome. Be like, it is really awesome. Uh, the, their Vampire the Masquerade stuff in particular is amazing. Um, but um, so that we we it, from the very start we 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 wanted a live play to be a part of this. And AMC has been doing other actual plays like and putting on on their channels and such like Colic. And so this this is a world they're familiar with. They they know how to make this kind of show. So you know we obviously have been focusing on the core rule book and the engines and making everything all nice and neat for for the Kickstarter. But so we haven't focused a lion's share. Of time, or should I say, a Shiva's share of mm. time? <laughs> Another deep hole for four fans out there, but um, it, it into what that story will be. But we're working directly with the people behind the franchise to figure it out, so that we actually are going to put something on a screen that will be a live play that will feature our roles being played in real time, um, and hopefully in a way that it's going to be pretty surprising and dare I say economical with um, all the other expressions of, of the IP. That's that's the intention. Um, every, everything else at, at this point, it's still early stages of de development because of just where the game is at. But now that Kickstarter is, you know, kind of strutting in, into the horizon, it's going to become a much larger part of my, my day pretty soon. Very cool. That's that's awesome. I don't think we've ever seen that with uh, with our RPG before, and that's that's awesome. How uh, what know, I've been fighting for for a long time. time. Yeah, it should be done. Absolutely. I, I, this, yeah. Uh, Crippler's Ice asks, uh, can we can you explain what happens if you get bit? Uh, actually, I had I think I emailed this over to uh, Matthias uh, when when I was uh, looking at uh, some of the uh, drafts of, of a couple of chapters. Is is there is there are there rules on a amputations and and you know maybe maybe like because having like a like a Merle uh, weapon attached to your arm and, and... Uh, yeah, but, uh, technically the answer is simply that you roll on a Walker bite table nice mm -hmm. or walker attack table so yeah uh, and if you get bitten it's just like in the the, the story uh, the the tv series that if you are unlucky to be bitten in a place that can't be amputated you know that you are going to die and it's time to you know write your will and testament yep. and, make your and peace with them make mm -hmm. your peace with everyone around you there is uh, rules for amputation. Yes, mm -hmm. there is rules for critical injuries. Uh, so, what happens? Yeah, it's a pretty long, random list of things that will happen if you are unlucky enough to get bitten. So mm -hmm. I won't go through it from top to fin. But, but basically, <clears throat> you can be all right after being attacked by a walker sure mm -hmm. but you can also die very very quickly from it yeah yeah yep. depending on how the the road uh, turns out yep and also in researching all of this i now know how to amputate a limb which is great <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> 
Useful Any knowledge. <laughs> uh, Jeff would like to know, do anchors change over time? Can you decide yeah. that your relationship has changed and that they're not your anchor anymore? Or can you give, uh, can you get a new uh, anchor or more than two anchors as your player evolves? No, never more than two anchors. Just always two anchors. Uh, but, or, but you can have one because one of them dies. Or you can, <clears throat> yeah, there are, there are ways to lose your anchor, it is. And to gain a new one will take time. Uh, because it, it's such a special relationship that it's not like something you can you can not, not just walk up, up to to someone in the inside the heaven and ask if you want to go steady. It's not it's not like that. You need to really invest time and emotion in that relationship for it to turn into that type of, of uh, you know deep and meaningful relationship that anchoring implies. I have to point this out re re real quick. I'm just being charmed by the notion of you in a younger years going to some girl and being like, can we go steady? <laughs> <laughs> I think you That's just right. unintentionally scared a lot of your adolescence. <laughs> I had the hair back then. <laughs> Oh I think you're rocking it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> metal, metal head. So we we need to find some of these pictures of the young Matthias. Yep. <laughs> uh, Paxeros asks, how might seasons and weather work in game? Uh, well, it works. Uh, <laughs> there are not super detailed rules for it in the game. But definitely, uh, the weather is something that, that the game master can use as uh, to create challenges for the, the PCs, uh, be it cold or be it a snowstorm, a, a blizzard, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, but there are no hard rules in the game that actually. I th I think there might be in the random events tables some better related uh, mm -hmm. uh, stuff. And also, I mean, in the in the survival scenarios, uh, the the season and the climate and whatnot can definitely be a factor. Uh, I mean, if your your the the scenario is about you fleeing from something and it's snow snow on the ground, that will definitely make fleeing <laughs> uh, much harder and not because you have to you know trample through the snow but because it's pretty easy to follow your tracks sure mm -hmm. uh, so yeah but it's, it's it's more like common sense thing and in this situation because the the, the world is so hostile and unfriendly and, and dangerous even the the smallest problem that you would not even think twice about now before the outbreak mm -hmm. where we live uh, it can turn into you know a seriously life-threatening yeah. situation in the world today, sure no yeah. doubt yeah i i really like honestly that it isn't as crunchy as it could have been because i i feel like it gives me as a gm more agency yeah. to make the world as hostile or accessible as I want it to be. So it's my choice. If I want to make it hard to run through that snow, it's not a dice roll or a mechanic hardly saying, no, you're going to trip, you're going to fall, you're going to die. Because that's how hard this world is. Like, I like that I get to choose how hard this world is and allow me to kind of ratchet up or down the difficulty based upon the story that I'm telling. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a question about uh, VTT support. Uh, of course, we unlocked the uh, Foundry a virtual tabletop uh, module for for backers on uh, for the starter and for the cool rulebook. Um, people are also asking about any other uh, platforms, or, or, or are we planning on anything at this time to support? Well, it is a little bit complicated. We are looking into it, of okay. course. But uh, the great thing. Uh, from a backer stretch goal perspective when it comes to Foundry is that we actually pay for the development of the modules. Uh, and um, which, which means that we, we are free to give them away, so to speak, as stretch goals. 
Th that is not the case with all the, the, the BTT platforms out there. So we are, we are definitely looking into it, but I don't want to promise anything at this particular moment. Do you would like to know how combat works in the game? Hmm. Does anybody want oh. to tackle that a little bit? It, it works in mysterious ways. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you'll find works. you'll find about it in the in the beta PDF coming yeah. soon. Yeah. No, but again, if you have played any of uh, these since this earlier Game Zero Engine games, um, you will not be super surprised by how combat works. Uh, in this game, uh, there is actually which. I am very fond of. There is this new thing called duels. So um, if you end up in a in a combat or brawl situation between just a few people, I mean, it can be me as the leader of my uh, community meeting Joe and his murderous cannibals over at their <laughs> camp, you know? Uh, it can, can turn into a, a standoff between him and me. And then... Uh, the combat is handled as a duel where where you roll where you perform this combat by rolling opposed rolls actually mm -hmm. uh, if if because this always happens with Joe and his cannibals one of uh, his uh, lieutenants yeah. comes to to help we still use opposed rolls but that lieutenant person uh, gets to attack me without me being able to do anything about it. So it's like two, really two against one. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a system that we call, uh, actually called brawls, <laughs> that is sort of uh, if, if more than uh, two or three people are involved in, in the combat situation. And uh, then it becomes turn-based. Uh, there will still be situations where you use opposed roles. For instance, if two people in that uh, skirmish uh, attack each other with, with ranged weapons, you can handle that as opposed roles, for instance. So, but yeah, uh, what more can I say? You're, you're, the basic mechanic is like it's always been in these dice pool systems. You have, you have, uh, you have a base attribute and you have a skill, for instance, close combat or range combat in, in this case. Uh, and to succeed with what you are trying to do, you, you roll a number of dice uh, equal to your attribute level plus your skill level. And any six, six you get as a result of that roll is a success. So you need to roll sixes to succeed. Um, anything else I should cover? I don't know. That was. I'm, I'm starting to be a little tired. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has been up for 29 hours. I think, yeah. <laughs> however long the Kickstarter. Not, uh, <laughs> that's not oh, very geez. far from the truth. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I I went to bed. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean. <laughs> I kept on hitting refresh, you know, right, right up until about two o'clock this morning, but then yeah. I got a few hours sleep. So. Yeah. Like, no, I, I don't I, think you did. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's one thing to, to hit the stack and another thing to be able to fall asleep and stay asleep. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, guys? Mm. I'm old as well, so. Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, please. <laughs> we, we've had this conversation yeah. before. Yeah. I know. And I love having them. Because <laughs> you always put a look young, so. Whenever I get the uh, Chris would like to know, uh, of course, will there be rules for normal, quote unquote, <laughs> normal walkers? Uh, we've seen through most of the show, the main show. Uh, towards the end of the show, of course, we saw the, the, the Walking Dead show. We kind of saw some, some special walkers Very that seem to have some sort of evolution that uh, happened. What, what uh, did we see exactly? Well, that's, that's, I, I, they didn't really they come out and say anything, but you know, they kind of alluded to that. Maybe things are starting to shift in that aspect. Uh, are, are, are mm -hmm. Zach, is this game going to address that at all in, in, uh, in the core rule book or, or future supplements maybe? Uh, possibly future supplements, yes. Okay. At, the, at the moment, uh, the, the walkers uh, 
there are not a huge variety of walkers uh, other than that i mean they have different backgrounds and different appearances and, and so on but not uh, different skill sets or so but, but as we have talked about this me and yo actually mm -hmm. that down the line it's far from un un unlikely that you will see supplements that include uh, whatever it was that we saw <laughs> right yep yeah i mean this is supposed to be the evergreen representative and sure. entry point into the rpg and if you asked every character that was ever on screen over 20 seasons of tv what a walker does 99.9 percent .9 of them are going to say the same thing so that's that's kind of the perspective that we've taken so far if we if that percentage changes uh then maybe our perspective needs to change but so far we're, we're trying to grasp the universe as most people li living in it would uh yellex asks uh, will the solo rules be available within the core rulebook or will it in, like print in printed edition or will it, it just be a digital uh, yeah. product? uh as you can see in the stretch goal list it is marked with a d meaning it's a digital uh, uh stretch goal or a reward uh, but yeah we 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 the, the solo mode is in development right now so we really don't know what it will look like uh when we do we can make a, we 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 will have that discussion uh but i cannot promise you that you will see the solo mode in the core group but it, it may happen depending on on what it really looks like when it's done Mm -hmm. uh, Armel also asked, will the license be open to the Free League workshop uh, with templates and, and so on? Or is this like some of our other, uh, you know, like Alien, we, we're not allowed to, to let people make their own, you know, content and put it out on, on uh, drive-thru and all, all those. I'm, I'm assuming that's probably going to be the case for, for this license as well. Is that, is Actually, that I don't know. Yo. That is uh, the stance thus far um it if demand is wild uh we may be able to make wild requests um but you know as of now they're trusting us with the ip to prove that we can do this authentically and make it scale in in, in a way that makes everybody proud um who knows where it could, could go brock and Witch wants to know wants to tell us that uh, the art of the walking dead is suddenly <laughs> sold out on amazon <laughs> yes Joe, yeah. look, at, look at you, the Joe Lafavi, influencer extraordinaire. <laughs> That's amazing. No, oh, no, no. That makes... this, is, this must be uh, thanks to the Kickstarter. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, we're gonna give it the, give, give all the credit oh, to yeah, Joe. No, Come on. Don't, don't take this from me. Yeah, don't take it this. from Joe, <laughs> Matthias. Come on. Uh, uh, how has Montgomery yeah. Kaiser's Testament this old on Amazon? Yeah, yeah. is, is uh, Hawkins still on Amazon? Maybe we can. Maybe someone actually, on. someone actually mentioned that. I saw someone put oh, it. Really? Jealous of you having a book for Hawkins. I made that book like ages ago. Oh, man, oh that makes. Tell you. This is oh, great. This is fun. <laughs> We're just, can we just He's put up? I love here, it. here, here. Let's, let's. All those books on Joe's shelves are all of a sudden going to sell out. So let's. There we go. Hopefully, Joe's, Joe's got an uh, Amazon affiliate link that uh, you can. Uh... Sadly, no. Oh man. <laughs> I just like me. Didn't you didn't prep hard enough for this this stream? Nope, I guess Joe. Clearly. <laughs> Uh, can you tell us tell us more about the solo play version? I, I know that that's kind of something that we just unlocked. Is it something that uh, we've been kind of brewing behind the scenes before this Kickstarter, or is this yeah, something yeah, we yeah. wanted to see what the the definitely been brewing, but it's it's too early in development for me to to speak about it in detail. It would be like I could lose my job if I did because. <laughs> Yeah. If I say stuff, the people might take it as a promise sure. that it will be one thing and then yeah. it will be another. No, so let's, let's, yep. uh, please yes. give us time to develop. But, but again, as I, and I said this in the comment section on the Kickstarter page, that when it comes to the solo mode, we are very much interested to hear what you, what you want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are at the stage in development now that where we have the, the possibility to actually listen to what you, what you say. 
And I think that's one of the, the strong things that we've been able to, to kind of uh, do with a lot of our products is that the solo modes are, are even though that they're, they're kind of like a stretch goal, they, mm -hmm. they've been solid like systems. Like there, there's, there's some solid mechanics and, and play value and, and game, you know, I, I, Sometimes you get those those solo modes and they're just kind of like tacked on and they're like, okay, yep. this is just something. But I feel like our, our our versions of solo modes are just really, really well done. And I, and I think that, that that goes to say with like the people that we're tapping into to design those uh, are phenomenal. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see where this is going to go with in, yep. in that regard. Yeah. I'll also like give a huge shout to the people on Free Leaks forums. Yeah. Like when we put out a beta and we're like, hi please break this, uh, make it better, uh, catch that thing I didn't catch, that typo, my eyes glazed over, uh, that deep pull I didn't think anybody would find, and one dude in Poland's like, hey, and I'm like, yay! <laughs> like, those forums are like my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> and so I, I truly believe that some of our, our best work are because somebody else like forged it once more time in fire, and yeah. it's just... If if you guys are not a part of those forums, it really is a fantastic place to be heard. Uh, it really is a collaborative process to, on that last round of bed. There are a couple of questions about character creation. Uh, will character creation have like a life path option, uh, mm -hmm. like in Twilight 2K, or more like a mutant year zero, year zero version of creation? And then someone also wants to know if there's an apocalypse born ar archetype for characters that are created, uh, characters that are created after the outbreak instead of, you know, characters that were, you know, existing before. Uh, to answer the, the second question uh, first, uh, no. Oh. Uh, we assume even that there is this archetype uh, called the kid and the kid was yeah may have been born after after the uh, the outbreak but can also have been just very very young uh, at mm -hmm. the start of the outbreak uh, so yes you have that that option uh, but in in general i would like to say that character creation in in the walking dead universe rpg is very open you have you have the archetypes that says some something about who who you your character was before the outbreak but it does not dictate what you do with your xp there are no you know career paths or anything that limits you know if, okay i i have sh chosen to to play the kid now i can I cannot choose these types of talents or mm -hmm. whatnot. So you, you you build and develop your character freely and organically uh, to fit its experiences uh, over, over the course of the how this story develops in your gaming group. Uh, mm -hmm. And there is also actually the option to build your character uh, without basing it on one of the archetypes, which I very much like. The, the archetypes are sort of a, a, a guide and a quick start and, you know, a framework uh, that you can use to make the process a little bit quicker. But if you, if you want, you can, you can build your character totally. I, I saw, I got one question on the, on the, I don't know where it was, but somewhere on the Kickstarter page. Someone wanted to see the archetype, the gym teacher. Ah, <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. The, the, the cool thing is that the, the archetypes are mechanically not that important that you need to us to create the gym teacher as yep. an archetype for sure. you to be able yep. to create the gym te teacher. Yep. You can create that archetype yourself together with the GM and the, your friends at the table and say, hey, I want to play this character that is good on this and this and this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's totally fine. Yeah, it, it was it took me a little bit to wrap my head around it, honestly. And it was it was Glenn that kept on being the one to stand up and help me to understand it, because 
that was one of the first things that was like that oh wow they're they understand post-apocalyptic storytelling where the the pizza delivery guy whose job it is to navigate every road to find the fastest place from one oh this is then i'll go here three minutes faster i'll go through this alley i'll do that person's getting out of atlanta True. that person yeah is, that person has a very particular skill set that in this scenario is life-changing and turns them instantly into a leader and it's stuff like that that allows you to understand that these frameworks of who you were can inform who you become but it doesn't define True. who you become and what you're capable of achieving once uh the stakes really hit the fan Someone also asked about crafting. Is there any crafting rules in this game to make, you know... There actually is. Is there? No, yeah, okay. this, this game, when we talk about it now and people ask questions, it, it really has rules for what you need. Uh, and maybe for everything. Yeah, there are... Uh, I talked earlier about the fact that you can assign people um, and time to uh, engage in projects at your haven. Uh, aside from, you know, getting better capacity and defense for a haven, you can actually school, teach, train your NPC survivors. Oh, nice. That's also a type of project. And mm -hmm. you can craft items uh, and, and stuff that you need. So, uh, yeah, the, it, the, the mechanic for that is called projects, and it's something that you do collectively at your haven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've really enjoyed that because there's something where when someone has a very specialized knowledge, uh, projects and teaching start to become really helpful. Like there's always that moment where like, well, I'm the only person who knows architecture and engineering, but mm -hmm. like, dude, write down notes in a notebook man <laughs> <laughs> like you're 65 what are you doing like, yeah. <laughs> like write a handbook for god's sakes mm. <laughs> so yeah we've talked about uh, a little bit about or quite a bit about nil's uh con con contribution to this this product line i, I think we should we would be remiss to to not talk about the artists that uh, have made this book possible as well and while we're talking about that I, I know martin's did the cover image and do you want to talk a little bit about some of the artists that uh, the, the the folks that are doing the art for the interior of the book as well and i'll show some of the interior spreads as, as we're talking the, about that. the artist the artist sorry yeah, the artist there's one yeah this is important because this, this is something that we pride ourselves with at freely uh that we tend to uh, work with just one artist per product. In this case, what you see right now is the cover of the, the core book and the, the starter set. And these are Martin Griep, uh, who, who does a lot of, of, of our cover art. And also he did uh, Alien and he has worked on Coriolis and Symbarum and, and Blade Runner and whatnot. He is actually one of, of the the permanent staff here at Free League and also the co-owner. So it's in-house, you can say. But the one we are looking at now is uh, from the pen, probably not, but the uh, yeah, writing utensils of uh, Gustav Ekelund. And he will be doing, uh, he did uh, a lot of Twilight. He has done a Twilight 2000. He has done a lot on uh, on Taste from the Loop and Symbrum as well, and Coriolis, and so he's he's one of our go-to guys, uh, you can say. And I think he has found a really, yeah, nice feel for for the setting. I don't know, as as someone from uh, not in-house, what what you two guys think of what you have seen so far, but I'm, I'm I really, love that. Oh, I love that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I AMC was worried honestly when we first started. Like, how do you visually capture The Walking Dead in the way that it still feels mm -hmm. like The Walking Dead, where like it, it maintains its visual identity and doesn't just become like another genre thing? 
Um, and when Free League said, well, have you seen Twilight 2000? It was another one of those like, ha ha, all right, we're good. <laughs> so I just had to put together like a Dropbox of like, why don't you look at these? And they're like, okay, I, th I think we're going to be just fine. Like it, it is the privilege of working with one artist who has a consistent voice who really yeah. brings their own magic to every single page that if you find the right guide to as like a, a visual vehicle to explore this world, there's just, there's nothing like it, you know, like it, as much as I love working with so many different artists on, on uh, other RPGs, there's just, there's something about that direct ownership and accountability of like, this is the vision of this world from this one artist. It's pretty amazing um, how deep he gets into it and makes it his own. Uh, how'd, how'd, how'd I do? <laughs> I, I was just uh, occupied by looking at the campaign page. We are so close to, to seeing mm. Michon. Come uh, on! Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Fenhorn would like to know, Nils likes player facing. Uh, how much player <laughs> facing is the Walking Dead uh, universe uh, RPG? Uh, in terms of uh, mechanics? Yeah. I'm guessing. Uh, well, mm, on a scale from Symbarum to d and no, I don't know how to frame this, uh, really. How player facing? I mean, uh, the Game Master does roll dice in this system. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if that is one of the qu questions that is behind what he was <laughs> after. Uh, I, I, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, will the pl players know whether or not they succeed just by looking at their dice roll? Uh, okay, no. Okay. Because, no, because because it will most often be opposed rolls. So they won't know if, if they succeed until someone else has rolled, often, often GM. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're getting pretty caught up in the chat. Uh, Killhard wants to know: will, will can people or players have pet walkers? So of course, we know know that uh, infamous scene with Michonne where she's leading uh, two walkers along. Uh, is that uh, have we thought about that in this core rulebook? Yeah, we did. You can. Excellent, excellent. Or rather, you can meet people who. Or is it that you can? I. Mm. I need to think about this for a while. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, you can. You can absolutely do that. And you will gain a, a, a certain bonus uh, from it when it comes to being not being attacked by other walkers. So it's, it, we also have a system or rules for you know dressing up as a walker, meaning smearing yourself mm -hmm. in walker gore. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that is also an option and it's i mean you don't want to mess up on that one cool. yeah gotcha. yes. oh no i was just going to be snarky about the word <laughs> I, I was wondering if maybe be messy rule... but don't mess up <laughs> yeah. i i wasn't sure if there was rules to like maybe cut like a face off a walker and maybe Put it on your and maybe whisper mm. and control. The, I, I mean, I don't know, but you know, I anyway. Yeah, I, I know it's represented somehow, somewhere in the core book, but but oh, at the moment, my super tired mind doesn't. Really <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're, we're Do you remember have exactly it. where that was, yo? I don't think it's a core rule. I think it's something where it's like if you really want to push where the rules are to find mm. a reason for it to work in a way, it's there. Mm. But it, it that's kind of how a lot of the rules work. Like if you, if you want the extra crunch, if you want to find the loophole in the system and do this one thing you saw on screen, you probably could make it work by doing X, Y, and Z. Like the yeah. DNA is there. But we don't say like, well, here's your starting kit and your pet walker. Sure. Like that's just that's that's not that's not what we do. <laughs> that is, it's you 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 have to make the choice and go the distance if that's if that's where you want to go. Sure. Well, uh, it's it's kind of we're getting kind of late, and it looks like uh, 
we're, we're kind of get to the end of the questions. I, I got to clean up my cell uh, before the team gets back <laughs> uh, from scavenging because mm-hmm. we didn't have spaghetti Tuesday last night because uh, of the Kickstarter. So we're going to have that tonight. So I got to prep the uh, spaghetti. Is, mm-hmm. is there anything else you got, y'all would like to say? No, before? Yeah. Spaghetti Tuesdays, they aren't they on Wednesdays? Oh, are they on Wednesdays? I th- yeah, they, normally that's the way. I mean, do. then may- maybe I gotta make spaghetti for the for the team once they get back from scavenging. I guess that's yeah. gotta clean up my cell and then and then go make spaghetti. Uh, is is there anything uh, you would like to uh, add before before we sign off? Uh, I'll let uh, maybe Joe go first. I think I think the the best thing that I could ask anybody to do is to not make assumptions of what the game is made for. Um, Is that it is such a versatile system to define what kind of experience you wanna give people. Uh, It's one of its greatest strengths is allowing you to say and have real agency over what the next Walking Dead story is. I've kind of fallen in love with how well it does that. So, whatever instances we're giving, whatever things we put on a campaign page, the most exciting story you could probably tell is the one at your game table. And so come into it with that open mind of coming into it and making it your own. Because if you do, like I have <laughs> clearly stumbled down that rabbit hole, uh, you're, you're going to find this game is, is very uniquely yours. Um, and I'm very proud of what we in Free League have done with this game and I can't wait to see what you do with it next. Matthias, uh, would you like to add well, to that? About, about the game, I think we have covered most. I, I, I hope that pe- you who are watching this f- feel that you have, have, have gotten a sense of what the game is and what it will be like, uh, even if you will not really see it until you get that beat up the <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, no more talk about the game. I just want to look straight at you guys and say a heartfelt thanks from all of us for the support you have shown up until now. And we sincerely hope that you will stay with us during this campaign and that we mm-hmm. will, you know, we are super happy at, with where we are right now in this campaign. but. This game, uh, uh, it feels feels really. It feels like it's going to be one of the really good games that we have produced over the years. And I really hope that you help us spread the word about the Kickstarter campaign. People can come and look for themselves. Uh, but I wish to see this this growing horde of <laughs> that we are, See what you did there. Uh, that it will keep on growing over the course yep. uh, over the coming three weeks. So, yep. yeah, we will we'll, we will be an avalanche of backer certainly slash so. before the end. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think that's going to do it for this session. I want to thank Matthias and Joe. Thank you so much for giving your time. I know we went super long this this session, and I th- want to yeah. thank everyone that uh, that joined us and asked questions. If if I didn't answer your if I didn't put your question on screen, more than likely we answered it uh, previously in the session. So go back and, and take a look through it. And and uh, thank you to everybody that stuck around this long. If you enjoyed this session please hit that like button down below. That helps uh, with the, the getting the scene. And if you haven't already subscribed to the, to the Freely YouTube channel, we'd love to have you as, as uh, a subscriber because uh, we just love to connect with our community and, and uh, with folks that are, are excited about what we do here. And, and we've got plenty more plans for, for this product line and, and many others. And, and, and we're just super excited that uh, y'all are, are excited along with us. So uh, yeah, that's going to do it. We want to wish everyone uh Good day, and uh, go check out the Kickstarter if you haven't backed it already. We'd love to. We'd love to have your support. So, thank you so much. We'll see you next Thanks time. Yeah. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Bye.